Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. We'll be reviewing the formwork placing tools for walls, going over the basics and reviewing all of its functionalities. So we're going to start over in the formwork tab in the top ribbon. We're going to go to the wall button and if you hold shift and hold your left mouse button and release that should launch the dialog. Prior to placing our conditions, let's go to the panel tab and select the pour that we want to associate these panels with. We want to make sure that we're in pour view, so go up to the concrete tab and click on the pour view button to make sure that you're looking at pours instead of concrete parts. After we click that select new pour button, you'll just click on the pour. Now once we add these conditions, they'll automatically be associated with the correct pour. So we'll select our option for each of the conditions that we'll be using. So we have a bulkhead, we have an L corner, and a pilaster here. We don't need to fill in any of these fields because they'll automatically be recognized by the placing tools. For this system, this height is parametric with the form height. So if I type in four feet, it'll give me a four foot form. If I type in six feet, I'll have a six foot form. We'll apply these settings and then insert new. You can place these two different ways at the conditions. Some conditions only work one way, some work both. So you'll have to just experiment and see which direction they need to be placed based on that green and red coordinate system. So we'll just highlight over each condition and left click. At this corner, it's recognizing a corner pilaster, which I don't want to place here. So what we'll do is check the box to only insert the selected type. When you need to stack conditions, you can just copy or move these conditions just like you could any other Tekla object. So I can select on those conditions here. I'll use a copy special linear and copy six feet in the vertical direction. And if we want to change the height of these forms, we'll just grab onto these conditions and just modify the height through this dialog all at once. So I'm going to deselect all the options. The only value that we need to change is the height here. So I'll type in 48 inches or four feet and then press modify. Next, let's add our panels. To easily create a view that only contains the objects that are associated to a pour unit, you can select on a pour unit, right click, and go to Create View, 3D View. Now in this new view that I've created, I'm going to rename it Pour 1, so it'll be saved in my view list. When you create a 3D view from a pour unit, what it does to filter out all the information in here is it assigns a filter for this view. So if you double click in the background and pull up the view properties and click on object group, it's filtering everything out by the GUID of the pour unit. To insert our panels, we'll first want to pick out the primary panel size that we want to use. So I'm going to choose a six foot high form that's two foot wide. We're going to click two points to place this and the other widths that it's going to add are all of the options that you have in your list. So I have four, five inches, and then six inches up to two feet wide in two inch increments. The only option right now I'll focus on is we want to form it on two sides. We'll leave the fillers blank since the steel fillers are already going to be placed since they're in my panel list. And we're going to select the pour that we want to associate these panels with. Now we'll apply and insert new. We can add this from a 3D view or we can go into a plan view and insert them that way. And we're going to modify these properties afterwards, but you can see based on the fill location that I have selected, currently it's last. So you can see the odd size panel is being placed at the end. If I change this to middle and apply, now you can see the filler is going to be placed at the middle. I'm going to end it short just to show the direct 
modification functionality. I want to make sure direct modification is turned on. And then I can grab onto this handle and move it to the right. Also with direct modification, we can click on these dimensions and if we want to use a specific panel width at that location, I can type in a dimension there. If there are specific panels that you want to avoid, meaning that you don't have that size or want to use it in this layout, we can control that in the avoid panels button. So I have a six inch panel there. Let's say that we do not have that panel size. I'm going to click on that avoid panels button, scroll down and find my six foot high and six inches wide and click OK. And now when I modify the wall, you'll see that it's no longer using that six inch panel width. Now it's using a five inch and a filler. If we want to remove all the options, we could unselect all and then click OK and then that will revert to our original option. Now what's happened here is I've modified the wall and I didn't have a value entered here for the thickness of the wall. When we initially place it, and I'm going to undo a couple times, it reads the wall thickness and uses that value. Um, so now if I select this wall and press get, it will fill in what that wall thickness was. So now if I modify it, it will no longer remove that panel set on the opposite side. If we need to type in a specific layout, we can type those widths in, in the panel layout field. So if we want to start out with a 12 inch panel and then a 24 inch panel and then another 12, I'll type those in and press modify and the rest of the layout will be calculated automatically. If you want to stack panels, we'll click on this drop down and there's different types that we can use. If I select the second option in the list, here's where we can type in the total form height. And based on the other heights of panels that you have, it will pick out the best height to stack on top of the six foot forms. The fill location at the bottom will change where the fillers are positioned. Currently it's set to middle. If I change it to last, you'll see that panel move over to the end or the second point that I picked. First or first and last. Next, let's look at inserting ties onto our panels. If we want to insert these automatically, what we will do is we'll select the walls that these need to be added to, and then we can just click on Add to Selected. To insert ties for the one inch filler, we're going to change our option to use the correct bolt configuration. Um, I'll just leave it as preset array. Go ahead and insert new highlight over that one inch filler. So we'll first review what direct modification functionalities we have with ties. Um, so whether it's on the side or ties that are at the same height in the middle, um, you can drag on to the line to adjust the um, spacing between those ties. So I can move them from left to right. For this panel system, they always need to be at the joints, so I'm going to undo and leave those where they were. Now that we have these selected, we can also press Get and make sure that these have the correct spacing. Mine were off by about a quarter of an inch, so let's just do 2 times 24 inches for my spacing. Modify, and now those should be at the correct positions. So we need to modify the same spacing to all of the other ties. Um, and what I'm going to use in this case is a filter to, to help me select those ties. Um, so I'm going to go to my 
visible object group filter for formwork tie. That will only show me the ties that are in the model. When you add ties with the formwork placing tools, it adds a UDA to them. Um, and the template attribute name is TW underscore type. Um, it'll always apply tie as the value for those objects. So you can use that to help you with filters in the model and both in the drawings. And if I double click on any of these ties in the model, it'll launch a dialog. With this dialog, we can't insert in anything new, but we can modify properties. So let's go to the ties that I did modify and I'll press get. And we need to update all the others to have the same spacing here. So I'm going to deselect all of my options and just check these boxes. Those are the only ones that I want to modify for these other ties. And then I'll select on all of my ties. Make sure we're using custom array as well. And then hit modify. And then we should have updated spacings for all of them. Next, we will add all of the clamps to the panels. We're going to select our Whaler one piece horizontal. Um, we'll use a, a preset array. And in this case, I'm going to insert new instead of adding to selected. Um, if I do add to selected, it'll want to add those on both sides of the wall, but I just want them on one. So it might save me a little bit of time if I just select the locations of where I want those to go. Another approach to this too could be that we add to selected. And then we can just delete the clamps on the side of the wall that we don't need. Direct modification functionalities are the same as with ties. One thing that I didn't point out earlier is how we can make duplicates or, or copies of these. If we have direct modification on and hold control, you can make duplicates of those parts. And that's about it for clamps. So next we can move on to our whalers. There's two different types of whalers that could be used on your formwork panels. With this system, they're not whalers that are holding panels next to each other, meaning a short whaler like you see in the picture here. Um, these are going to be along the wall. So adding to selected doesn't really work for that type. So we need to select the point where we want to place those. And when I insert new, there will be positions on the wall that I can snap to. So I'm going to snap six inches from the top on this side. And I'll click all the way over on the right. Now if we need to extend whaler on the end, hold alt and drag over to the left. That'll allow us to snap past the wall. And now to make a copy of this whaler, if I hold control and drag down, that'll make a duplicate. The only thing I'll need to do here is just adjust the whaler on the end. Okay, now that we've got all of the whalers placed, um, we can continue on to our braces. For this system, it might be easier to place these if we just use a single brace rather than a preset array. So we'll go ahead and grab the brace that we want to use at the top. Um, we can also select a, a kicker brace that we want to use. So I'm going to leave that as none. Um, and then we can set the angle at which this brace needs to be placed. So we'll insert new. And when I add in a single brace, I can pick any point along the panel. Um, so let's say that we need to brace it at that position. Now something we can use with um, our, our direct modification is we can have all of these braces linked together. So if I added all of these out individually, they, they really wouldn't be connected together. I could modify them to have the same setting. Um, but there's a quick way that we can have all of these connected together. Um, so I'm going to hold control and make a duplicate. And let's make another one. Again, just holding control and dragging and holding on that handle. 
So we can either make those copies by holding control and dragging on the handles, or you can enter in the distances here. The cool thing about this is as we make a change to one, all of the others change. If we need to modify the height, the default setting is that you can only move it to the left and to the right. If you try to drag up and down, it won't let you do that. So if we click on the brace and then click on the handle, we want to make sure your contextual toolbar is shown. If it's not, hold the shortcut for Control K or check that in your options menu. And if we want to adjust all of those to be at two foot six from the top, we'll just modify all of them through the dialog. Next, let's review the platforms. Um, if there's just a typical spacing that you're trying to achieve, the best way to insert these would be through the custom array option. We want to make sure that we check in the drop down that we have the correct option. Sometimes an option might show up that you, you don't have available for this product family. And you'll notice my buttons are grayed out on the bottom. Um, so once I select that scaffold bracket, those buttons should appear. Now I'll just click on insert new and then I'll click my start point, my end point, then those brackets will be added. A similar direct modification functionality applies for these as well. I'm going to grab the properties from this and we just need these spaced at six feet on center. So I'm just going to type in 72 and then those should place them at the right locations. That concludes today's presentation. Thank you for watching and make sure to reach out to your local Tecla support if you have any questions and also check out the articles on our Tecla user assistance for the formwork placing tools.